concern for the insight of the MST and the technicality of that. But we are not going to go for the certain discussion. We have a shortage of time, so I will request uh, Sir Kishor Mundan uh, for, for this evaluation. Thank you so much. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. I know it's lunch time. Sorry for the delay and bear with us. You will get to know a lot of information about standards because I'm dealing with all the library science standards, right? So my objective, of, my objective of this talk is to aware you all about the standards that we have and you all being experts from library. Uh, we actually like how we make a standards, I, I will tell like we seek the experts advice and we write into the document and we hold a committee meeting and then we formulate the standards, right? So my expectation from all of you is to, for your inputs, because for making the standards, revising the standards, we need the uh, inputs from the experts, right? In my talk, basically I'm going to aware you all about how we work and what would be expectation of, expectations of BIS from all of you experts of libraries. So in my slide, uh, let me go through it. So uh, it has been explained by Raju sir what is a standard and uh, it has some definitions to it. So and uh, definition of a standard and regarding MST5 we have a committees right and it is being chaired by Shailendra sir and we have talked about it we have 25 experts and total standards are 117 so my expectation from you all be to how to implement these standards these all are long documents so uh, reading all these standards and the implementation part, how libraries will implement this standard and how experts of library will give the inputs if, if required for the implementation part. So we have total 117 standards as of now and participation in ISO. So actually what happened like we make the standards and we adopt the international standard as an Indian standard, right? So for for the adoption of international standard as an Indian standard, the international standards are developed by some sort of developed countries, right? So before adopting them as an Indian standard, we need to look into the implementation part as per Indian context. Now, who will look into the implementation part? It would be the experts of libraries who will read the document and they will tell us the modification before the adoption of international standard as an Indian standard. So I have the emails of all of you, all of you in, in my database and uh, there are total 170 interna international standards available that are to be adopted as an Indian standard. So before, adopt, before adopting them, we need your expert inputs, whether we should go as it is or whether we should modify the interna international standard before the adoption of it as an Indian standard. Now, uh, as, as discussed, our the scope of MSD5. So MSD5 has experts from diverse domain. MSD5 has experts, right? But it it all the experts are under the scope of MSD5. So the scope of MSD5 is very important because we cannot make the standards out of the scope of committee. So all you can say that scope of MSD5 be standardization of practices relating to libraries, documentation and information centers, indexing and abstracting services, uh, bibliographic formats, co conservation, print, medium archives, information science, document imaging applications, data processing 
and aspect relevant to handling of documents right so this is the scope and what we do we look the experts as per the scope of sd5 we invite them to be part of our committee and we hold the meeting to discuss on the subject so i am going to tell few of the important standards there are total more than 200 standards available worldwide right i am going to tell few of the important standards if you read this document these are sort of long documents so if you read this documents you will get to know what your libraries can function in a better way if you implement these standards these standards are nothing but a sort of guidelines that if you read you will get to know how library works and how it can be made better and if you have some recommendations that this standard is to be modified or revised you can write to us we will discuss on that so this standard is 11539 as you can see it was uh, it was published in the year 2003 since then it has not been revised so uh, an indian standard has to be reviewed at every 5 years right so i request all of you to read this standards and if you have any inputs for the revision of this standard then it would be really good we will discuss your input in our meetings for the revision of this standard so it is it is a 29 page documents it's a guideline few of the important thing from the standard i would like to tell the guidelines by this standards help to create an ideal public library enhance their services and meet the need of their communities the guideline will result in smooth functioning of the libraries maintaining order protecting resources in, in ensuring fair access promoting safety fostering a welcome environment and enforcing legal requirements so basically it's nothing but a, a guideline how a library will uh, i mean what are the things a library should take into account right now the scope of the standard every document has some scope right and all the guideline will be uh, will be written as uh, uh, under that scope so the scope of the standard is uh, this standard provides guideline for services provided by public library right uh, some of the things that i would like to tell about this standard it says objective of a public library what are the objective of a library governance of libraries reading materials rules for library services human resource part and review of services so it's basically a long document and if you read it you will get to know how a library should function right now the other standard i have included in my slide is is 1553 so it is the document of 1989 since then it has not been revised so again uh, i i would i would be requesting for the inputs from all of you for the revision of this standard because what we do in bis we seek inputs from the experts and we write in the document for the revision so is this standard is basically design of library library buildings recommendations relating to its primary elements so some of the thing that i have included what would be the benefit if you implement this standard in your library and if any new libraries are being developed or constructed if they follow this standard it would be good because if you make something by planning it would always be good so these are the benefits if you implement this standard in library building so enhancing the user experience promoting accessibility optimizing optimizing space utilization facilitating facilitating technology integration and supporting sustainability this this actually this trend has been initiated recently the concept of sustainability so if you would like to bring some sustainability aspect into libraries or some some idea then you must read doc this document what it says how to bring sustainability in your library buildings uh moving next stays so basically this the scope of this standard so this standard covers the recommendations relating to 
primary elements in the design of library buildings uh, the next standard i have mentioned here i think all you can see is 15282 entries in directory of periodicals so how to make the entries right what would be the benefit if you implement this standard standard in your library so the standardization of entries in a directory of periodicals has several impact in libraries some of the impact or all you can see consistency improved retrieval efficient exchange of information enhanced accessibility and interoperable interoperability facilitates collaboration right i found interoperability is very important because standard entries promote interoperability between different libraries databases ensuring periodical information can be easily integrated and shared across platforms right so if you implement these standards when you make the directory of periodicals you will uh, get the benefits right so the scope of this standard you all you all can see what this document is all about so this standard lays down guidelines for making entries in directory of periodicals so all library experts here if you want to know how to uh, make the entry or how worlds are doing it you will get to know exact idea and if you have some recommendations then again i am repeating it you can write to us that this standard lacks this part and you can modify it we will take this matter to committee meeting and we will discuss on it how to incorporate your inputs uh next standard is actually it is iso adoption so it is not an indigenous standard it was developed globally and we have adopted it as an indian standard so uh, i have no idea actually i have done graduation from metallurgical engineering right so i i need inputs from library experts to make the documents to revise the documents so isbn i had read uh, when i joined bis so uh, it is international standard book number all you can see what are the benefits it it since its inception in 19 17 the isbn has been internationally recognized as the identification system for publishing industry and its supply chains as an identifier for publications isbn fulfills a role in supporting the needs of the book supply chain uh these are the information about isbn what isbn is and uh, what this standard on isbn can do on what and the scope of uh, this standard on isbn is it establishes the specification for international standard book number as a unique international identification system for each product form or edition of a separately available monographic publication published or produced by a specific publisher that is available to the public uh so this is the scope of uh, isbn and it specify the construction of isbn the rules for its assignment and use the metadata to be associated with the isbn allocation and the administration of the isbn system so this again this document is very big if any one of you interested to read the document to uh, review the document for its revision then you can write to us that i am interested and i have expertise in isbn and i can give you some recommendation then i will reach out to you i will get your inputs and i will discuss, discuss in our meetings uh again the rfid actually if if any one of you would like to tell about rfid rfid is the recent advancement in libraries and uh, we have iso this is again iso internet internationally developed uh, standard so libraries are implementing rfid as an item identification to replace barcodes rfid streamlines applications like user self service security and material material handling implementing rfid text can bring several benefits to libraries such as improved inventory management enhanced security streamlined checking etc etc right so uh what are all what is actually this standard so the scope of this standard this standard specifies a model for the use of rfid text for items appropriate for the needs of all types of libraries including national academic public co corporate special and school libraries overall this standard provides a standard standardized model for the use of rfid text 
in libraries offering a framework to enhance library operations and improve user experiences so if any libraries in india wish to implement the rfid tagging they must read the document what the world says basically so this document has been developed by internationally international experts global experts and uh, if if any of the libraries wish to implement rfid they must read the documents and that's what i say we we adopt the international standards as per indian context if we need we will revise the standard because we cannot compete with developed countries regarding the implementation part so uh, the next standard is library you performance can, you can name this uh, standard uh -huh. Ex exactly now i i think i'm running out of time and we are delayed for the lunch so i will i will just you just name the ha give okay. give the name what 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 so are some provide some link from where we can get yes. the detail of all those standards of pis mm -hmm. uh yes so actually all all the indian standards are freely available we we have a website where you can Ah, uh, ah, uh, so the, actually, sir, uh, we we have a guideline, a guideline that you if if you can access those 19 standards out out of out of 117 standards, 19 are indigenous standards developed by Indian experts. So those are freely available. You can download it for free. Rest of them are international standards. So international standards you cannot download it for free. and you cannot get the access so what we do we give that international standards to our some strict i mean we cannot give it to anyone right we give it to our experts and they review the documents but however if any of the expert they feel they want to review the standard then they can write to us we will give the soft copy and again it was informed by our rajiv sir it it is available for only reading part not for the implementation part but, but because for the implementation of commercial use you need to buy international standard right so uh, i will give the email id if any one of you feel uh, that you if you want to read any of the standard you write to us that you are you have this expertise and you want to review the standard you want to get some information then you can write to us we will give the standard so sir uh, again some of the important standards i was mentioning it is again archiving of electronic data so it's again basically guideline how to archive electronic data and if you read the standard you will get to know some technical uh, points about archiving of electronic data and again i had some introduction but due to running out of time so again uh, this standard iso 164 Three nine. So all you can see, there is written ISO. There is no IS public ISO. So we have not adopted it as an Indian standard yet. That's why we are not able to see ISO. So it is still an international standard. We are in the process to adopt it as an Indian standard, and we need your, I mean, inputs. Whether we go for the modified adoption, we we should modify some content in the standard, or we should adopt it is. So what we do, sir, basically one thing we. uh before in the adoption part there is a thing called wc wide circulation so i have the email address of all of you so i will circulate this standard to all the emails and if they have any input they can write to us right so we i mean wide circulate the document to all the stakeholders in fact and all the consumers are our stakeholders all the libraries are our stakeholders uh okay so again sir uh, uh, again this is uh, international standard we have not adopted is a indian standard quality assessment for national libraries and uh, this is the process of standard formulation so again i would like to tell that uh, if, if you have ideas as well that this field requires a standard then you can write to us and we will ask for the draft what the standard what the scope of the standard would be what the introduction of the standard would be and we will hold the meeting to discuss on that new idea and it will be circulated to all the stakeholders the email ids we have and we have 
and the registered member we have so that they can read the documents and confirm and then again it goes to final draft when once it is agreed by all stakeholders and our committees then it it, it gets published as an indian standard so this is the process of standard formulation process i hope i am able to make some sense to all of you so that's uh, my talk thank you everyone uh, since the morning we all are listening and gathering knowledge about different uh, kind of standards what bis is doing and what kind of international standards are available how bis is going uh through different activities and uh, challenges are also mentioned many uh, processes which we are we all are going through we are learning i think we all are in learning phase <laughs> so this is about library standards what kind of things are being done by bis india and ifla as well so first we have to understand as sir has said i have ample time but i will listen to your hearts as well that i shouldn't be a villain in between you and lunch <laughs> so i'll be uh, covering things in short so standardization is to industry what culture is to society why this phrase is important why it can be important in our understanding because culture shapes the society it frames certain traditions certain guidelines for people and in the morning shalender sir also also mentioned that standard begins at the birth of a child and throughout the life the person goes through certain social standards those kind of behaviors or customs so in the same way for the industry aspect standards do the same job if standards are not there definitely there will be no follow up of certain regulations certain processes certain steps so this is one understanding about uh, standardization why it is important because it is a process of formulation and application of certain rules and those kind of rules and formulations or certain frameworks are outcome of certain scientific applications because as kishore mentioned that he is from metallurgical engineering we are from library and information science but somehow at certain level the, the application of science technology and experience is very much required and why it is important because we all live in present but we focus on the future so for the industry purpose as well for the libraries as well we have to focus upon the future where we really need to understand what the standard is in the morning some of the authority mentioned okay uh, people must be knowing about the standard but as far as <laughs> i am understanding as uh, in the morning time uh, professor shalendra mentioned that somehow he got to know about that cds isis then he got to know some kind of frameworks for that uh, records exchange or data exchange okay since that time but overall time that mentioned is here that we tend to forget we became mechanized in our library routines but we forget that there are certain standards while we are developing the libraries and we have to implement them so it is that kind of guideline or document that really informs us what kind of problems if we are going to face in library application we are going to have solutions also there are specifications procedures guidelines so that different kind of library services or information products they can be systematized and they are of in standard nature so why this concept got uh, some evolution why it is important because codification on of knowledge is really significant we tend to codify everything once we take example of library classification what is that codification of subjects so that we can really relate as uh, uh, professor pani mentioned that the librarian the then librarian of gnu told him okay go to the floors and find out the material for your topic how he could have been finding that kind of information on the basis of library classification so we can mention here that different standards are there for library cataloging different functions library classification definitely for furnitures and buildings different things are there so as uh, we know that and currently bis is functioning as per their uh, act of uh, 
and uh, there are different sections like sections 10 and 11 of the BIS Act 2016 and uh, different rules from 22 to 30 of BIS rules 2018 which are implemented and as being the national standards body and in India a signatory to the WTO and TBT agreement there have been certain international programs as well which I think uh, I remember Shailendra sir we met there so these kind of uh, national level and uh, international level activities are also going on so different uh, structures have been mentioned like uh, panel discussions committees subcommittees then there are different divisions what kind of structure is there so BIS is tending to help Indian libraries, definitely other industries as well, but Indian libraries as well in those kind of manners. So when we relate to library standards, there is a question, what are library standards? So there are certain standards as uh, Kishore also uh, mentioned and showed uh, different slides on design of library buildings, specifications for library furniture, different fittings or metal shelving racks as well wooden shelving cabinets and different kind of library lightening as well why these things are important once there is definitely a kind of ambience in library that the user can feel that this is the sufficient light for reading or this kind of furniture is really useful we don't need to think that I can sleep on that library chair as well as not. But it should be comfortable enough to really sit for hours and write down from thesis or notebooks or different journals as well. So these kind of things are important as library standards. I'm mentioning here this ISOTR 11219-2012 for library buildings. And this is one example for American Association of School Libraries. Do we think in our country for school libraries standard? I don't think we really think about it. But this is one example and they have five uh, standards. The learner and the learning, planning for instruction, knowledge and application of content, then organization and access and leadership, advocacy and professional responsibility. So this is for their school libraries. but how we can relate to our higher education libraries as well where access and leadership both are important along with the content provisions. There was one term from um, Mr. Rajiv Ranjan's uh, presentation, quality control something like that. So we can relate that kind of quality control in libraries as well. What kind of e-resources or print resources we are acquiring, purchasing. So how these are really being utilized, how many times we really tend to understand how many documents have been read, what is the user footfall and what is the frequency of those returning users. Somehow we have to relate those kind of things with the documents available. We really feel proud that these many e-resources we are acquiring, we are subscribing, but what is the usage? how we can relate it with the research output of the universities and definitely we have to go for NIRF rankings as well. So the structure of a standard, there is one phrase on the screen we can see, principles and performance indicators. This is how the standard is related. Why it is important? Because library as a service organization we think about ourselves as the service providers. We have to provide information access to the users. We have to provide the content to the users. Where are the performance indicators? That's the area where standards really help because they provide certain guidelines, certain procedures which are to be followed. These are certain factors. Uh, for certain reasons why standards should be adopted. Uh, I can read out few like adding performance indicators for application of these specific libraries. For example, we are talking about nowadays a lot of open access. Okay, different libraries are going for open access content as well. They are framing policies as well how we can really incorporate those documents in our routine library proliferation we can inform to users as well. Another example is collect data from assessments that demonstrate degree of the success. Okay, degree of success in terms of library resources usage, kind of services designed and how libraries are future oriented. So this is uh, some information about 
BIS. Also, why we need standards? Definitely, facilitating trade and commerce. As in the morning, uh, Mr. Rajiv Ranjan mentioned about the safety concerns. Uh, Dr. Sanjeev was also worried about the risk management in libraries. So all these things are important where we can relate to standards and how these are really composed, dif uh, different components from the uh, society and industry or academia, they come together in the form of experts, manufacturer, even consumers, government departments, they all give inputs for formulation of standard. So considering what are international standards and what is Indian standard, as per the BIS Act of uh, 2016, so whatever the standards established and published by Bureau of Indian uh, Standards, na National Standards Body, they are called as Indian standards. Am I correct, Mr. Rajiv Ranjan? Thank you. Also, so there are few other organizations as well who are involved in the uh, development of standards like RDSO, ARAI, this TSTSI, TEC, IRC, different other organizations as well, and uh, uh, IRC, then this uh, Central Pollution Control Board, then Directorate of Marketing Inspections, so many others. So why these are mandatory? They are not mandatory, They some of them are for voluntary, but whenever some regulations is implemented, okay, that is part of some policy of some particular organization, then the related standard is mandatory to be implemented. So whenever one has to acquire some standard or they can, uh, they have to search for a standard, definitely they can visit the BIS portal and they can find out and as Kishore told that they can write to BIS as well and he will be very much helpful. So now coming to IFLA standard, they are of international nature, uh, produced, designed or implemented or whatever form we can say generated by IFLA and they are providing on the basis of current consensus on rules, principles, certain guidelines and best practices. So why they use the term standards? They uh, use the term standard for different kinds of documents such as conceptual models, rules for resource description, different digital format codes, uh, guidelines and best practices. So this is some information about IFLA standards procedures manual. There are certain groups like committee on standards, uh, BCM review groups, also IFLA's bibliographic uh, reference model. Then this another group is ISBD review group. So uh, the purpose is to maintain the ISBD. Uh, and then this uh, linked data technical review group. Their functions are given here, objectives are given. They have relations with other external committees as well. For example, certain names are given here in blue. Then this uh, CEN, European Committee for Standardization, then International ISBN Agency Boards. So these standards are internationally reviewed, published and implemented as well, especially in library sciences. And uh, these are certain conceptual models like functional requirement for bibliographic records, then this press, then IFLA library reference model, then uh, these are certain descriptions about these certain uh, models, then digital format codes, few examples are given here for Unimark, concise authorities format or manual, then bibliographic format, okay, then uh, th these are elaborated information about it. Then certain rules for resource dis description like guidelines for translation of IFLA ISBD namespace in RDF. Then this ISBD International Standard Bibliographic Description 2021 update to the uh, consolidated edition. Then these are certain uh, tr translations, certain guidelines. Then this is IFLA namespace. We can see here this FRBR vocabularies, then vocabularies for ISBD, then LRM, then Unimark and this Multicat as well. These are certain guidelines because IFLA issues standards in the form of guidelines as well. These are big lists of certain guidelines which are found for rare books, special collections, national bibliographies in digital age, audiovisual, multimedia and easy to read materials, children's library services, exhibition loans, different topics are covered here. Literacy programs, brain users, 
then persons with uh, dyslexia or revised and extension then multilingual thesauri these are certain topics which they have covered this is a long list from them now these are few screenshots uh, from bis i have borrowed then uh, this is available on their website in the form of pdf when you search you find out this kind of information which is quite uh, informative what kind of standards are there you just put some uh, keyword uh, the subject particular you want to search about and uh, these kind of information you receive guidelines for for example we can see practice for layout of library catalog then library catalog of abstract card then information and documentation presentation of catalogs of in standards so all this is visible on the screen so these are few examples thank you so much i think i was i finished in 10 minutes <laughs> thank, thank you so much thank you so much it is so wonderful to see you everybody now you just see this uh, the perfection is kind of on you you are just putting out one layer to another layer another layer right there so there is no ultimate standard in it so we have what we need to do we have to go up one by one and perfect with which society requires that's the new model Okay, I'm just thinking of this task right now. But Ranganathan has done a wonderful job. He has created some canons. Canons is something which is standard. How we are going to think? How when you are thinking for the classic, classifying a document? How we are going to uh, make uh, thorough your idea frame with the canons? So canons basically is the words he has taken from the Bible that is normally used for the nuns how they are going to lead the whole day when they will wake up in the morning what will be the prayer style everything so that is there in library science philosophy so he is the first person to think that there is a need of standard in library library uh, and information center so that's why this is the most important aspect in to this day we have to have Uh, theme for that, and we have to go into the to create more standard for our generation to come. Thank you so much, everybody. Uh, hello. See, we got the list of uh, standards from uh, BIS and ISO also, and they have given their price also. See, in our library, uh, we purchase lots of library books, library science books. books on reference cataloging circulation so what i am thinking is that this is the first uh, seminar a uh, first meeting on uh, role of standards in library information and why not we should buy these standards in created by bis right and the iso also so that everyone should have some shelf where the standards are kept and go on reading it and let us next time whenever we are meeting We will come up with the really a good ideas. What is next to be done, right? And let me tell you the way we we started this meeting. Uh, I am really thankful to BIS also, but you know uh, there were a lot of constraints from the BIS also uh, in terms of money also, you know, in terms of organization also because this is done in collaboration with the University of Delhi. Uh, so what I am thinking is that if we will really start. Uh, giving our inputs to the BIS, and uh, let me tell you, I can uh, request the BIS also. Whatever we create in the BIS, let us give this fund to us to develop more in BIS standards. Thank you. Yes. So thanks for your suggestion. I would like to inform that we already have a. Uh, provision of research so i would like to invite all the experts if they have any new ideas or something for their if any idea comes to their mind and if they think that will be useful for standardization since we, are, we in bis always think that we are not the experts on any subject but we always uh, welcome expert on that particular subject so if they have any ideas for any research provision that uh, further study needs to be done then please give those ideas to us we will be happy to sponsor for this good thank you
तीन लाख रुपए से दस लाख रुपए तक है गुड <laughs> रिसर्च होनी चाहिए तब तो हमको फंड मिल जाए और मैं ये फंड ना ग्रुप को नहीं चाहता मैं चाहता हूँ कि ये हमारे एमएसजी एस फाइव में आए ताकि हम रेगुलर मीटिंग्स कर सकें थैंक यू